In this video, we're going to study plain isotropic linear elastic material models. The first type of plain linear elastic isotropic material models is the model of plain stress. Plain stress is the situation when the stress matrix is described by four non-zero components. Sigma on 1, sigma on 2 and sigma 2 1 are equal, and sigma 2 2. The rest are zeros. These situations are usually for plates under plain states of stress. The plate is allowed to freely deform in the third direction, and so the stress sigma 3 3 is zero, and all the shear stresses out of plane are zero as well. In the plane stress condition, the plates are allowed to freely expand and contract in the third direction, and so they develop epsilon 3 3. And so the strain matrix has non-zero epsilon 1 1, epsilon 1 2, epsilon 2 2, and epsilon 3 3. We're now going to try to simplify the relationship between the stress and the strain, which in general is given by the 6 by 6 matrix. Knowing that sigma 3 3, sigma 1 3, and sigma 2 3 are zeros, we can eliminate the corresponding columns. We also can eliminate epsilon 1 3 and epsilon 3 3, the rows, because these are all zeros. And so we end up with the simplified relationship between the stress and the strain for the plane stress condition. We can also invert that stress strain relationship to get this simplified relationship between the stress and the strain in the plane stress condition. And don't forget, in the plane stress condition, there is epsilon 3 3 that's developed, and the relationship between epsilon 3 3 and sigma 1 1 and sigma 2 2 is given by the equation here. The next condition that we're going to study is called the plane strain condition. The plane strain condition is for objects that the strain is only developed in a plane and out of the plane the material is prevented from contracting or expanding. In this situation, epsilon has four non-zero components, epsilon on 1, epsilon 2, 2, epsilon 1, 2, and epsilon 2, 1, which is equal to epsilon 1, 2. The rest are zeros. The stress matrix in the plane strain condition has five non-zero components, sigma on 1, sigma on 2, and sigma 2, 1, which is equal to sigma on 2, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3. Sigma 3, 3 is the one responsible for the zero strain in the third direction. So I have a restraining stress in the third direction that prevents the material from having any strain in the third direction. Starting from the general relationship between the stress and the strain for linear elastic isotropic materials, I can start simplifying this relationship by looking at which values are equal to zero. Since epsilon 3, 3, epsilon 1, 3, and epsilon 2, 3 are zeros, I can eliminate the corresponding columns. The rows of sigma 1, 3 and sigma 2, 3 are also equal to zero, so I can eliminate those. And so I will be left with the simple relationship between sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, sigma 1, 2, and epsilon 1, 1, epsilon 2, 2, and 2, epsilon 1, 2 for the plain strain condition. The inverse of the relationship is shown here as well. This is the relationship between epsilon 1, 1, epsilon 2, 2, and 2, epsilon 1, 2, and the three stress components, sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 1, 2, in the plain strain condition. And don't forget that in the plain strain condition, I have sigma 3, 3 that's developed in the material. That's equal to Poisson's ratio sigma 1, 1 plus sigma 2, 2. The last type of simplified models is the model of axis symmetry of linear elastic isotropic materials. In these models, I can look at an object that has axis symmetry and I can extract only one cross section. In that cross section, I can look at only sigma 1, 1 sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3 and assume the rest are zeros. And that's the same for the strain matrix. I can assume that the non-zero values are epsilon 1, 1, epsilon 1, 2, epsilon 1, 2, epsilon 2, 2, epsilon 3, 3, and the rest are zeros. 
And in this situation, I can assume that epsilon 33, 3, which is the strain in the third direction, is actually related to how far the material moves in the first direction. So the more it moves out, the more it develops strain in the third direction. And this is equal to u1 over r. And we will try to show you in the lecture where this came from. By eliminating all the values that are equal or that are multiplied by zeros in the relationship between the stress and the strain, I end up with a 4 by 4 matrix relationship between the strains and the stresses in the axisymmetry situation.